Okay, in the last video, we implemented the HTTP server with a simple graceful shutdown functionality. I've designed the code so that we can easily add integration tests to verify its functionality. And today, in this video, we are going to do exactly that. I know I've actually said that we are going to add unit tests, but I thought why not making things more interesting by adding integration tests instead. So let's just get started. Okay, so what we have here is our main.go file and what we're going to do right away is we are just going to create a main underscore test file. So let's just do this right here. I think it's worth noting that normally you would just split the functionality in different files and then have for these files your specific integration or unit tests. But for this specific project, just for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to use our main underscore test dot go file. So let's just declare the package up here. And then what we're going to do first or what we're going to add first is really a basic integration test to just verify the successful graceful shutdown of our HTTP server. So what we can say is just declare another function here, which we will call test server graceful shutdown. And then we use the normal testing.t pointer here. And this integration test just should test or verify that our server really can gracefully shut down while allowing active requests to really complete successfully. You can think of this test as our happy path. So what we'll create first here is our really basic test server with a simple handler that just simulates work. So we can say server and then we just create this server here. Now, if you watch the first video, I think you should be quite comfortable with this logic right here. Then we declare the address, which we are going to specify as 54332. Now feel free to use a different, more not used port here. There is also a way of getting a dynamic port that is not really used on the system, but we are not going to focus on that and we are going to really simplify the integration test here. And then what we're going to do is we are going to create an inline handler function for this test to simplify the request handling. So we say just handler and then we declare http.handler func. And in this handler function, we are just going to sleep for two seconds. You can obviously decrease the time here if you really want to. And then we're going to write a really simple response back to the client. Now this specific handler right here actually handles all the requests to the server. So it's really similar to a catch all handler that just receives every single HTTP request to the server regardless of the URL path. And now you've noticed I've used this time.sleep here and now you might wonder why can't we actually use the new sync test package here. I've also made a video about that so feel free to check out this video as well. But the main reason for that is that the sync test package works by controlling time advancement only when all go routines in the bubble are basically doably blocked. However, the functionality of using signal.notify creates go routines that are blocked on external events. And these external events are mainly always signals which are outside the sync test bubbles control. So really unfortunately we cannot use that here. But nevertheless we can live with that and let's just get going. And what we can do is we are going to start this specific server we've declared up here in a separate go routine. So we just say go func, right, to just spawn a new go routine right here. And this overall just allows the test to continue and send requests while the server runs. And what we're then going to do is we are going to call the run server function, which we've declared and implemented in the first video. And here we are just going to use the background context for now. Then we're going to specify the server we've declared up there. And then we're going to define a timeout like five seconds. Now, as as you can remember, this run server function actually returns a possible error. And this error might occur whenever there's something wrong with the listen and serve functionality or generally with the server startup in general. So what we can do to basically handle this error, we can just declare a new channel up here. So we say server error channel, and then we're going to create this channel right here. And then what we can do is we can just say server error channel. And then whenever run server returns an error, we are just going to send this error through the server error channel. Okay, that's quite cool. Now let's just get going by just sending the get request to our server. So what we can say is just response error and then we just use the HTTP.get method here. Now in here we are just going to say HTTP and then localhost and then we're going to use the address right here which just defines the port in this case. Now this request specifically will take two seconds to complete due to the handler sleep functionality. Now right here we are kind of just trying to 
test that this request completes even when we shut down the server. And we are going to do that after that directly with the syscall.kill functionality. And in here, we are just going to say syscall.getPID, which just gets the process ID of the currently running process. And then we're going to say syscall.sigint, or you could even use sigterm, for instance. And this syscall.kill function just sends the sigint signal to our own process, which we've identified through this getPID functionality. Now, what we're then going to do is we are just going to verify, basically, that our HTTP request succeeded despite a shutdown signal. This just proves that the graceful shutdown functionality is working correctly. So right here, if the error basically exists, then we're just going to say t.fatalf and then unable to send request to server. And then we use percent %v right here. Now, generally you can use fatal f or error f, but fatal f is kind of special because you should use it when you want that no further checks are made and the test should fail instantly, which we do want in this case, right? Okay, now with that in mind, we can just check the response code by just saying resp.statusCode is not equal to status okay. I forgot the if right here, so let's just add this. And right here, we just check that we received a successful HTTP status code. And this just confirms that the request was processed completely. And you can use error F right here to basically say that the test should fail, but you might check other things as well going on or going down the line of this test, right? So it will just not terminate the whole test entirely with this line. It will just say, okay, fail, but then please proceed with the test and check possible other things as well. So right here, we just say expected 200 status okay and then we say got and then percent d and here we say response.status code right quite simple now let's just read and verify the response body and we can obviously do this with the io.read all function right here and then we just specify the body right here as well. Now this just reads the response body until an EOF and returns it as a byte slice. So we can say body right here and then error, right? Obviously it returns a possible error as well. And if the error is not equal to nil, we are just going to say fatal F because then we do not really want to proceed with any sort of checks or functionality of this test unable to read body and then we say percent %v error, right? And this verification and the reading of the body just ensures the handler completed its work before the server shutdown. And then we're going to verify we got the expected response content. So what we can say is just if string body and then is not equal to completed. Because remember, we actually returned here or we directly wrote a byte slice, which just contains the completed string back to the client. And this is kind of the final proof that the graceful shutdown preserved the request completion, right? And this string body just converts the byte slice, which was returned by io.readAll to a string so that we can actually compare it. And if it was not equal to completed, we are just going to say error f expected body completed and then got percent %s string body, right? Really simple, but we are not done yet because we still need to check this server error channel. So let's just quickly do this right here. We just say server error, and then we want to receive from the server error channel. Now this is a blocking operation and this should normally not really occur because the run server function did not return any sort of error at all. But we still need to check this. So if server error is not equal to nil and here again, we are just verifying that the server shut down without any unexpected errors and a nil error here just really means that the graceful shutdown worked perfectly. Now we are doing this check in the end to really preserve the logic order. So we are testing first the request response cycle and then really verify the server shutdown. Now, if there was a server error, we're just going to say fatal F and then we say expected no server error. And then we say got percent %v and then server error. Okay, quite cool. This is our first test. Now, if we're just going to run this test by just saying go test, right here, we see that this specific test was completed successfully. Okay, that's quite cool. Now we've actually tested the happy path. So let's just test the unhappy path. And we are going to call this integration test just test server timeout 
during shutdown. Now this just verifies or should verify what really happens when requests take longer than the shutdown timeout. In this specific case, the server should forcefully close connections and we are going to test this right here. Now again, we are just going to create our test server right here. So we just say server and then http.server. Now in theory, you could just create a simple utility function that will just generalize this test server creation, but I'm just going to copy that right here and then paste this right here. Now we are going to change the port because it's a different test. And then we are also going to adjust the timeout to 10 seconds. And we are going to create a few things here and we are going to use multiple channels and go routines here to really coordinate concurrent operations that just need to happen simultaneously. Now this is kind of necessary because in the end the test needs to verify that when the shutdown times out. So both the client fails and the server returns the deadline exceed error. And without the help of go routines, these blocking operations really couldn't run concurrently. And that's why we will use multiple go routines and multiple channels. So let's just do this right away. Now we are going to create this really basic server error channel here again, really similar to our first server error channel we've defined in the first test. And here we are going to create this channel. Now this is just again the channel to receive the server's final error status. And here we are going to expect this to be a timeout error since the graceful shutdown will fail. Then we're going to spawn a new goroutine. And in here, we are just going to start the server with a very short shutdown timeout, which will be around five milliseconds. And this just guarantees that the 10 second request will not really complete in time. So what we can do is just say server error channel, and then we're going to send the error through this channel, which will be returned by the run server function. Here, we're just going to say context of background, we're going to specify the server and then we're going to use five milliseconds right here. Okay, this is all we need right now. Now let's just create another go routine right here. And in this go routine, we will actually send a request that will be interrupted by the forced shutdown. So we can basically just use the http.get functionality right here again. And then we use localhost and then we just use the server address here. Now this request will pretty much just start but never really complete successfully. And the connection right here will be forcefully closed during during the shutdown. And then we obviously need to propagate this error somehow through a channel as well. So let's just define a new channel, which we will call request error channel. And then we say make channel error. And then we're going to say request error channel, and we are going to send this error through here. Now again, this channel is just there to really capture any sort of error from the client request. All right, and then we are going to actually sleep one second. I'm going to explain why we are doing this in a minute. And then after that, we are again going to kill our current process by just saying syscall.getPID and then syscall.sigint. Here again, we are just sending the shutdown signal while the slow request is still in progress. And this really triggers the timeout scenario we want to test and verify here. Now, why are we using this time.sleep functionality? Right here, we are going to wait for one second to really ensure that the request has started and the handler is sleeping as expected. Now, this simple timing here just ensures we test the scenario where shutdown really happens mid request. Okay, after that, we are just going to verify that the client request failed. And here we are just confirming that the forced shutdown interrupts active connections. So we are trying to basically receive an error from the request error channel. And if this is equal to nil, so if there is no error while sending the request, this test should fail. So we're going to say error F and then we're going to say expected client request to fail, but it succeeded, right? So this is a blocking operation right here. So it really blocks until a value is available on this specific channel. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we are going to wait for the server to complete its shutdown process and get the error back. And we are doing this by just defining the server error here. Again, this is a blocking operation because we are trying to receive a value from a channel. So we say server error channel right here. And then we're going to verify that we got the expected timeout error, which should be context dot 
deadline exceeded. And this context.deadline exceeded error just indicates that the graceful shutdown really timed out. And this overall in the end just proves our timeout mechanism is working correctly. So we can check right here if errors dot is, or in this case not, and we say server error. And then we're going to use the deadline exceeded error right here. So if it's not the deadline exceeded error, we are just going to error f this test as well. So we say here expected context dot deadline exceeded error and then got percent v server error. Okay, quite cool. And if we run this test here again, what we will see is that both tests actually work correctly. And then we can use dash v here as well to actually see what is going on with the specific integration tests. But that should be it. And that's also it for these two integration tests that you can use to test the functionality of our graceful shutdown. Now, if you are curious about the first part, feel free to check out this video here. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely day and bye bye.